right. <laughs> This better be a good one. Hey, what's up, everyone? Renee Loki Geek here. So we are here. It's another Wednesday, and we're here for chapter 21 of The Mandalorian called The Pirate. And according to the most recent poll that I posted on the channel, it seems like a lot of you out there are not feeling so hot about this new season of The Mandalorian. Look, I totally get it. I know for a lot of you, maybe it seems like it's not really going anywhere or we're not really quite clear on what the end goal he is here but i think this is one of those things where you have to be a little bit patient to see what the payoff is going to be i've liked some of the setup that we've gotten so far and of course it's still like an exploration of the characters that we're still getting to know really but yeah i'm still looking forward to this episode and it is a bit of a longer one this time it looks like it's clocking in at 43 minutes again one of my biggest problems with this season and with any of the mandalorian seasons is that the episodes are not consistent as far as their running times i wish they would just stick to a steady 45 minutes 50 minutes 60 minutes kind of length of an episode and not have these varying like lengths from week to week especially like last week when we got something that was really short and it kind of felt like you know it was a waste or it was filler uh call it what you want but i think that leads into a perfect time for us to just quickly recap what happened in chapter 20 last week chapter 20 was kind of like uh how do I say it? Was kind of like your typical adventure of the week type of episode. And I use that term because that's a term that I've heard being thrown around, especially when you watch uh, episodes from like The Bad Batch or any of the animated series uh, under Star Wars. Because, yeah, you have an overarching kind of story and plot that you're looking forward to completing or to seeing what the end goal and the end game is going to be like. But every now and then you get thrown these like adventure of the weeks where the the team or the characters are being set forth on this mission or they have to tackle some sort of issue that is very much contained to just one episode and i feel like that's kind of what we got last week the mandalorian and grogu they're in this compound with you know his people and of course bo katan is with him and she's getting used to the lay of the land how everyone interacts with everybody we saw a lot of training montages and all that and uh yeah it was really uh, an interesting episode i think one of the highlights we got was really seeing a flashback of grogu when he was being rescued and saved from order 66 and the thing that really really melted my heart was the return of ahmed best in Star Wars on TV. Not really his debut as a Jedi Keller and Beck, because as I mentioned last week, the first time we got to see him on the screen portraying this Jedi was through that uh, Jedi Temple Challenge, whatever kids show. That is very much like Legends of the Hidden Temple that they tried to do and they only did one season of, but it was nice to see him in this kind of like story action mode. And he was badass and it was so good and I felt so happy all the love that he got from everyone online very much well deserved and it was just really nice to see him back in star wars because he you know the stuff that he went through uh portraying jar jar and the backlash and all that which is not really all his fault uh, that was basically what he was directed to do and asked to do um to the point where you know it was looking pretty you know glum for him uh as a person but it was so nice for him to kind of get that love and recognition once again but that was it the rest of the episode was like you got this like bratty mandalorian kid that you know didn't really want to train with grogu and all that and then he gets captured by some creature and now they have to spend the rest of the episode really uh hunting him down and, and uh rescuing him and all that but the one thing that we benefited from that was that we got to see bo katan kind of lead this group to rescue the the, the kid there and it was good to kind of see her back in that kind of leadership role and you could tell she's kind of feeling it out as to how she belongs with this group and maybe really just buying her time before she could really, you know, maybe lead them and maybe eventually become the leader herself. Towards the end of the episode, you know, she tries to open up to the armorer, talking to her about the mythosaur that she saw. 
And, uh, you know, I feel like that's going to play very heavily into this season, especially if I'm assuming that they're all going to eventually go back to Mandalore to try to reclaim it. I think one of her first things that she's going to try to do is maybe tame the Mythosaur so that she could show, hey, I'm the rightful ruler here. I'm the one who you should be following, not this guy who has my dark saber or whatever the case is. Or maybe they'll rule together hand in hand. Who knows? But yeah, so that's basically it. So let's see where this episode goes, where the pirate goes. I'm very curious and uh, hopefully we'll get some more movement within the main storyline here. But before we do all that, again, if you're new to this channel and you're just seeing this for the first time and you want to see more of this, all you have to do is hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Everything that is done here on the channel, you can also find audio versions of through your podcast platform of choice. All you got to do is type in Loki Geek on there and you'll find the channel there where you can download the audio versions of the recap of these episodes and anything else that we do here. Lastly, if you're in a position to further help support the channel and help the channel grow, please do check out the affiliates that I have in the description of this video. Got some great deals uh, from 80s Teas, Entertainment Earth, Bulletproof Coffee. If you're on the East Coast, weather's getting warmer, th there are going to be nice activities to do outside and maybe there's going to be something interesting in the city where you live in. So check out Fever Events because they always have some awesome, unique stuff to do and check out. So maybe you could do something nice for yourself or for a loved one. And by doing so, you will be helping support the channel at no additional cost to you. And once again, as I say every week, all the help and your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, with all that out of the way, let's check out chapter 21, The Mandalorian. Let's get it. I'm all ready. I'm wearing my nice little Star Wars pajama pants. You can't really see it, but it has like the Death Star and TIE Fighters is one of my favorite PJs that I like to wear. And it's very comfortable. I, I, you know, I'm on the couch. I want to be comfortable. So let's be comfortable and watch this episode together. All right, I think we're going to be seeing a return of that pirate guy from, I believe it was the first episode. I think uh, whatever happened there is going to bite Din's ass. But let's see. Yeah, looks like we're back at Navarro. The poor statue. They never replaced it. Are they even still working on it? Let's move. The trade district closer to the shipping terminals <laughs> it's so funny seeing him as like a as a not businessman but you know someone who's in charge of the town he's being so serious uh-oh that's not looking good pirates, pirates? Here, of the caribbean Shall I begin negotiations? No, 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 no. If we buy them off, that'll set a bad precedent. Ah, yes. No, no it's just politics. What's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, it's this guy. It's the swamp thing. <laughs> Moss man. All I see before me is a pampered nobleman dressed for the pomp of his wedding feast. Ooh, harsh words there from a walking, walking tree. Not first. Well, now I will shoot first. Uh-oh. You are no longer under the protection of Moff Gideon. See, this is why he needs a marshal. He needs someone to help protect him and all that. Where's Cara Dune? This isn't Sabak. You can't bluff your way out of this one, Gaga. I don't hail me again unless it's to surrender. Wow. How come this feels very Star Trek like, right? Hailing frequencies on. Take these plans. Look for Obi Wan. Yo. Oh my god. Wow. No fucks given. Look at that. Oh man, Navarro can't seem to catch a break. I will lead you to the launch site. I 
won't abandon my city. We have to get the people to safety. Look at that. A man of the people. That's amazing. The trajectory of the character. Man, that's not cool. Ooh, I like the music. It's definitely a different take on the music. Very cool. Hey, look, it's a Y-Wing. Ooh, where are we now? Wow. They're really doing some different stuff with the, the soundtrack right now. I'm digging it. <laughs> oh, so nice to see this guy again. That's awesome. Are we going to see Filoni walking around too? It's amazing how this guy has become like a reoccurring character in this series. Interesting. Oh, whoa. Who's that? Tomorrow's gonna make it. Is that Zeb? They haven't returned in dispatch in weeks. They're swamped. They'll never get an answer in time. Is that it looks like Zeb from Rebels? I like your attitude. Good luck. You're gonna need it. No name? Oh my god. Wait a minute. If that's Zeb, oh man, that's pretty awesome. To see a live action version of him? I mean even if it's not Zeb, just looking the way that they portrayed, you know, that type of creature in live action, it looks so good. And I mean, we know that, you know, they're going to have ties with Rebels characters. I mean, you know, obviously we've gotten Ahsoka. I know we're going to be getting like Hera and I know we're going to be getting like Sabine in Ahsoka. So if that's Zeb, that's pretty damn awesome. Oh, man. I also find it interesting that this guy is like the go-to character, uh, especially since he, you know, worked with uh, the magistrate before in, in doing some stuff. And he was the one who was actually talking to Cara Dune, you know, trying to recruit her to join whatever whatever he's his main thing he's like a pol he's like part of the police kind of like patrol or whatever the case is so i i, I they had conversations there so i wonder if gina carano was still here if you know obviously we'll be talking to cara dune more uh instead of of this guy but I, i'm so happy that this guy has found himself a permanent role in in the mandalorian and in star wars that's pretty pretty damn awesome where is this? Is this Coruscant? <laughs> All of a sudden, this looks like a police procedural. Captain Tavy here to see Colonel Tuttle. Oh, look who it is. No, no, no. Do not put any more stuff on that part of the deck. Tim Meadows is in this show? What? Book? It's okay. He can stay. You, Scoot. <laughs> That's so funny seeing Tim Meadows here. Captain it's kind of interesting how we're getting a lot of non-Mando centric attention to a lot of these type of characters in this season. I get the gist. It does sound concerning. Excuse me, Colonel. I'm going down to the commissary. Mm. Can I get you anything? Okay. All right, you kiss ass. Have you ever heard of Navarro? I have. Spent some time there, in fact. They have yet to sign the charter. They're not a member planet. Uh oh. It's not good. <laughs> all the bu bureaucracy and all that. <laughs> it's so funny how we're getting a lot of this right now. The citizens speak of Moff Gideon occupying the town, and now a pirate king is attempting the same thing? These events could all be connected. See? Of course she knows about Moff Gideon. I'm requesting authorization and backup for dealing with pirates on Navarro, sir. That's it. Bottom line. Yes or no? Yay or nay? To understand why becoming a Republic signatory is valuable. 
by letting them suffer. Sounds like a rather imperial way of thinking. Captain <laughs> I'm used to that kind of talk. That's right, call her out. You and your sword didn't see the light. You were captured. No. I was liberated. Tensions are high. Uh oh. All these events, it's not coincidence. And by the time it becomes big enough for you to act, it'll be too late. Mark my words. I've got a bad feeling about this. Ooh, she is not happy. Oh my God, they're like refugees. It's amazing how they were able to get them all out that fast. But where are they going? Citizens of Navarro. Oh, that's an interesting character. Who was that? I have sent a message to the New Republic. Help is on the way. Is it though? <laughs> or is this guy, he's going to uh, work independently? Oh, there you are. Wow, how how was he able to track them down like that? This guy's good. Oh, that's funny. With all their run-ins and all that, now he's going to go and ask for a favor from Din to help out. That is hilarious. Brilliant. Woo woo. Delphi Rangers. Oh, they were ready for him. Clear out, blue boy. The new republic isn't welcome here. Sorry for dropping in unannounced, but if I'd given warning, your settlement would have cleared out before I ever hit atmosphere. Hey, he's got a point. Find us. Mandalorians pride ourselves on our secrecy. Someone I served with in the rebellion is amongst your ranks. Who? Oh, the droid? <laughs> oh, he's like a little spy. We'll now have to relocate. Or we could kill him. Whoa. This man cut me a break once, and now I'm returning the favor. Corson doesn't care. Karga's your friend. You won't let him die. I just came to tell you your friend is in danger. I, I kind of feel like I'm watching an episode of one of the cartoons right now. This feels very cartoony action-like. I don't know, is it just me? If you have my word, I will not reveal your location. Sorry to intrude. Well, he's very polite. He didn't come across as pompous or very authoritative, like a police officer. Many of you don't know Grief Karga. The do fought against him when you rescued me from his ambush. Since then, he's had a change of heart and has risked his life to save mine, as well as the foundling in my charge. That's right. I stand before you to petition an intervention to help rescue Navarro before it's too late. It's going to be a hard sell. I don't know if he's going to be able to convince them. Grief Karga is now a high magistrate and has offered me a tract of land on his independent world. Perhaps it is time for us to live in the light once again. Oh, is he proposing a new home? So our culture may flourish and our children. Smart. It is to play in the sunlight. Very smart. Kroger's like, I like playing in the sunlight and eating. Does anyone else wish to speak? Bet you the, the big guy is going to say something. I nope. Knew. I knew it. I saw my brothers and sisters fall at the hands of the imperial butchers that hunted us in the sewers. I saw many die to save the life of this one tiny foundling. <laughs> That's right. He's talking about you. You little brat. <laughs> the question we should be asking ourselves is why? Why should we lay our lives down yet again? Because this is the way. Because we are Mandalorians. I have had my disagreements with this man. But he risked his life to save Wow. And oh, I did not see that coming. Look at that. Favor returned. And I, for one, will take up arms to fight by their side. Wow. 
This is apparently the way. Wow, look at that. I didn't expect him to turn like that. To be on Mando's side? Wow. I'll use this to drop you in and you will operate as a tight military unit. All right. This is getting exciting. I love this. To surprise and defeat an enemy that outnumbers us. Ooh, okay. We're going to get it. Navarro is an independent planet and no longer under remnant imperial or new republic protection. But it's that very independent... Look at Bo. Bo being the leader, the strategist. Oh, this is great. This yours. But now, you can be heroes. Woo! <laughs> With the speech and everything. Oh, this, this is going to be exciting. Now, this feels like Star Wars. At least like the action-y, exciting part of Star Wars. This is what I think a lot of us have been missing so far. They're a bunch of bullies. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, let's eat them. Hey, these drunken bastards. Uh oh, here we go. There's a star fighter off our port bow. Oh! Like, I remember that guy. Hold of you to return, Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, this guy has a bone to pick with him for sure. Thanks for your help, Mando. I decided to take you up on your offer for a tract of land. Be careful, my friend. They've got you outnumbered 10 to 1. Ah, uh, not for long. Boom! I like those odds. I bet you do. Again, it's so nice to have a Naboo starfighter like that. Oh, here comes Bo. First team, prepare to drop. Ooh, let's go! <laughs> yes. Mm. Area clear. Team two, you with us? Nice. Oh Team man, two, I've always wanted to see like the group of Mandalorians just basically act like a team like that. That's freaking awesome. They took out an engine. Help aid and the fighters to reform for a counterattack. They're pursuing the Mandalorian. Then bring them back. <laughs> Which is it? You're gonna go for the Mandalorian or are you gonna now come back and protect this ship? Won't get away this time. Right, come in. The Starfighter's a decoy. There's a secondary attack. Regroup with the core. Oh, oh wow, I'm surprised he did. I thought he was gonna be like, you know, hard headed about it. Like, no, he's mine. He won't let he won't get away. <laughs> it's <a> tattletale. <laughs> like they're over there. They tried to shoot me and my friends. Oh, watch out behind you. Ooh. Yeah, they're they're in a bad situation right now. Oh no. Oh, here's the big guy, heavy gunner. This feels like Battlefront. For those of you who played Star Wars Battlefront, this feels like that right now. But with Mandalorians. It's pretty damn awesome. I love it. Oh, damn! Ooh. Alright, Bo. 
Show us your flying skills. Oh! That's right. The perfect backup. Oh, damn! Yo, Mando's no joke with that thing. Oh, yeah, baby. Come on, get it. Oh! Woo! That's right. I'm gonna turn you into f mince meat. All clear. Look at that. Not only does she make a mean helmet, but she knows how to fight her way through things. Oh, you guys are done. That's it. Wow, look at that. That was dope. Been a pleasure serving you, Captain. But it's time to part ways. <laughs> oh, you little coward. It's like, I'm out of here. Live to fight another day. Mmm. Man, the special effects on this episode are so good right now. Wow. It's so epic. Well, that's fun. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Fine Mandalorian liberators to whom this planet is forever indebted. Nice. From this day forward, I, Magistrate Grief Garga. Hi, Magistrate, sir. <laughs> That's right, don't forget. Hereby cede all land from the western lava flats to Bullock Canyon to the fine people of Mandalore. Wow. But you do now have a home. Welcome. Interesting. And thank you. Very interesting. Ah, okay. The armorer wishes to speak with you. Ooh, about what? Oh, they're back in the in the sewers where they originally used to live. The underground. This was once the forge of our covert. I remember. I remember the forge well. I'm sure you do. And here stood a simple one. They were both forges. They served the same purpose. All right, get to the point. Why did you want me here? <laughs> Remove your helmet. Wait, that's not the way. Do you respect my station? I do. Remove your helmet. Look at that. After all the fighting and being in that helmet, her hair looks perfect. Looking good. We must walk the way together. Oh, Mandalorian. What are you hinting at? I understand. Do you? I was taught that the mythosaur existed only in legend, and yet you saw it. What is she believing her now? Mandalore must all come together. You have walked both worlds. You are the one who can unite us. Nice. Wow. That's what she's been waiting for. Oh, her helmet's off. Oh, everyone's like, like, why does she get to have her helmet off? Oh my God, she's gorgeous. 
<laughs> Okaton Kreese is going off to bring other Mandalorians in exile to us so that we may join together once again. She shows her face. And her perfect hair. We can bring all tribes together. Nice. Now we're talking. It is time to retake Mandalore. Ooh, here we go. The Mandalorian is really about Bo-Katan, not Din. Think about it. Uh-oh. Oh, that's an Imperial ship. That's not good. Is it disabled? Whose ship is that? There's a record of a missing craft in the region. The details are classified. R7, launch probe. Oh, that's neat. I like that little thing. I wonder if R2 could do that. It's a new Republic prison transport. Ooh. Uh-oh. Check the departure times. Wait, prison transport? Uh-oh. Flight times match the ship transporting Moff Gideon. There it is. There we go. But where is he? And Moff Gideon's body is missing. This was an extraction. Who were the perpetrators? Right, yeah, who extracted him? There appears to be something embedded in the cabin wall. Getting close on that. What do you see? What do you see? What is it? It's a fragment of Beskar alloy. Are you saying that Moff Gideon was taken by Mandalorians? Wait, what? What? What is going on? What other Mandalorians could it be? I mean, what other Mandalorians could it be? Oh. Oh, wow, the plot thickens. Oh, all right, now we're getting into it. Whew, fascinating. All right, Th this is an episode that we needed, and I'm glad we got it. A little later in the season than I was probably expecting or hoping, but I, I have a feeling now we kind of have a feeling as to what we're really dealing with for the remainder of the season here. Um, it took a lot of setup to get here, but I, I have a feeling it should be really, really like on full, full uh, swing from here on. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Let's let's recap. Let's talk about this. All right. Well, what do you all think about that? Huh? Now that was exciting and yeah really fascinating and i think they covered a lot in this episode and i am pretty pleased with the, the end result here first of all before we move into the full recap and um thought my thoughts on this episode i went to the credits and i'm glad that they included it so in the credits i'm going to show it on the screen right now guest starring that was indeed zeb that we saw in the bar in that cantina so we have a cameo from rebels in this episode first time we've seen a live action portrayal of zeb from that show and how amazing and awesome is that now why is he by himself uh you know it, it's nice that it looks like he is working with the new uh republic you know, which is very interesting. Uh, what he is doing right now, we don't know as of yet, but it looks like he is working with, you know, um, our buddy there who is friends with uh, the Mandalorian who, you know, had that nice discovery at the end of the episode. Uh, where's Hera? We don't know. Where's the rest of the crew? Uh, probably we won't know until, you know, Ahsoka series comes out. But it was so cool to see Zeb. Uh, that's really, really awesome. 
and that's the one thing that's awesome and that is done really well with this series and you know because of course you have Dave Filoni who's uh you know responsible for all this stuff is that you know he had, does a good job at tying in all these things and you know kind of playing that fan service and making sure that the characters that he's been responsible for and that he's created gets their time and yeah you know, we definitely got to see that with zeb appearing in this episode okay so the director of this episode was peter ramsey uh and i quickly looked it up and he directed uh the dreamworks animated film rise of the guardians um and i remember that was a very kind of fantasy uh action driven type of film uh animated film and it looks like he may have some stuff to do with spider-man into the spider-verse and all that and there was a report last year that he was also tapped to direct um an episode or two uh of ahsoka uh so it looks like this is our first taste as to what he can do and bring to star wars and i think he did a really good job at you know, maintaining the the pacing and the tone and the action, the drama, the intensity, and all that. Uh, again, I, I said it earlier. It and it's it's funny now. It it makes sense. I said it felt like I was watching uh, an an episode of the animated uh, series. You know, whether it's Rebels, Clone Wars maybe bad batch it felt like that type of tone and that type of action and drama and build up in suspense it really felt like i was watching one of the animated shows and from this guy who looks like he comes from the animated world it makes sense but to be able to give that type of sense and uh set that type of tone in live action form is very interesting and i think it really does play well within the the mandalorian universe and within this type of series but i think the main important thing and the one major takeaway here is that we are finally getting a sense of what we may be seeing as the end goal of this season and of course it's been hinted all throughout this season so far it's just you know we've been getting like little snippets little build up here and there um but with the mandalorians helping out and rescuing navarro from the pirate threat the pirates had nothing to do with it the pirates was just basically um a, a setup to kind of get them to come out and do what they do and and really help out the people of navarro and it's kind of like uh it's kind of like a homecoming, you know? The Mandalorians have been so used to being secluded and hiding and all that. Now they came out into the forefront to help out these civilians. And now they're showing, they're being shown gratitude. They're been, they've been awarded part of land where they can live and set up their home base and all that. And it was a great setup. And we saw a glimpse of it last week with Bo-Katan kind of like showing her leadership skills, showing how well she could organize and really uh, direct people and strategize and all that stuff. And the armorer sees that. And based on the conversation that they had with Bo mentioning the Mythosaur and, you know, them being on Mandalore, now is the time for the Mandalorians to unite. And she wants Bo to really take on that leadership to unite the Mandalorians all together. Since, you know, Bo has kind of been on the other side of things, you know, she comes from uh, higher, the higher hierarchy on Mandalore, while, you know, these guys are a little bit more of the outskirts. They're a little bit more a smaller group. Bo has been on the other side where it's like, you know, she was leading and, and in charge of so many Mandalorians and all that. So hence why she was allowed to take off her helmet and kind of show that she is a universal representative for the Mandalorians, for them to reunite and take ownership and reclaim Mandalore, which again, if you pay attention to this season and where it's going, obviously that was going to be the main goal here. And it's nice that they finally kind of spilled it out and spelled it out for everyone that, all right, we saw what we could do under the leadership of Bo. We are we were united. We were able to fight and and you know defend these people and liberate them and all that. What more can we do under her leadership when we have a bigger group? When we have everyone back together, 
get let's get these mandalorians out of hiding and let's reclaim mandalore and bo is you know going to be the one in charge of that and i'm sure with din's help and all that and with grogu that's going to be what the end goal here is and then consequently and you know kind of in parallel with all that moff gideon has escaped so he is no longer in captivity and again that is something that was somewhat hinted at and uh, i think we were kind of expecting again if you were paying attention to everything so moff especially kind of his beef with the mandalorians and kind of you know his fascination with mandalore culture uh mandalorian culture and you know of course he was in possession of the dark saber he might be the one that will try to prevent them from reclaiming and recapturing mandalore so i think now we have been set up and we've been pretty much told what that main conflict is going to be what that main opposition is going to be it's going to be the mandalorians trying to reclaim mandalore under the leadership of bo katan and of course din's going to be there to help out with grogu and moff gideon is going to prevent that from happening uh, because i'm sure he's pretty sour with how things left off uh in the previous season and he wants revenge and he you know, he has this little network working with him right now you know he has elia kane is it Eli or elia i always don't know how to pronounce it but whatever she's embedded herself behind the scenes with you know the new republic and you know i'm sure i'm pretty sure she's like spying on how they operate where they're putting their focus on and you know she has you know the the grasp on that side of things and i'm sure she's gathering intel from moff and all that stuff and that's going to be so fascinating to see how that's going to play out who knows what other uh help he has we don't know who has freed him and it turns out the big reveal also was that beskar armor or beskar remnants was found on the ship so was he rescued by another group of mandalorians that could you know potentially pose as a threat that would be really interesting to see and it'll be interesting to see like who those people are and what's gonna what's gonna happen you know so a lot of stuff has been kind of laid on the table have been kind of laid out here on the table and it's going to be really interesting to see how that's all going to play out um could there be maybe potential double cross you know is there a potential conflict maybe within the current set of mandalorians that we know now and maybe there's a, a secret agent or a spy within that group maybe moff gideon got into their ear somehow and he you know he's trying to get them to help him out or whatever the case is who knows i mean is it the big guy you know it was kind of interesting to see how the big dude kind of you know made a quick turnaround just because just because Man mando and Bo helped save his son in the previous episode all of a sudden now he's on mando's side and you know kind of like supports what he thinks you know should be done and all that when he was always opposed of what mando used to do uh especially when you know it was when it came to light that he was in possession of the dark saber and everything so it'll be really really interesting to see who this other group is and who's helping out moff gideon uh kind of escape and come back into prominence and i'm sure that's going to be the major conflict that we're going to see with the mandalorians as they try to reclaim mandalore so have at it speculations are abound who do you think is involved and uh, behind all of this stuff let me know all your thoughts in the comments i'm sure the internet's a buzz right now and people are speculating and kind of you know throwing their hints and everything like that i would love to hear all of your thoughts all of your theories let me know all about them in the comments but most importantly let me know your thoughts and feelings about this episode i feel like this is an episode that we've been dying to get uh it took us a while to get here uh, but we're finally here and i think we have enough time to kind of watch and see how this all plays out and i'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of excitement as long as we don't get another adventure of the week type of episode uh i think we are in good hands and we're in store for a pretty interesting ride so let me know about your thoughts on this episode uh in the comments let me know all your theories where do you think this is going who do you think is involved with uh rescuing moff gideon and and kind of uh getting him out of captivity and who do you think bo is gonna approach first 
when it comes to seeking out the other Mandalorians to kind of help uh, unite them all as one and reclaim Mandalore. Could we possibly now see Sabine show up? And oh yeah, let me know what you thought about that nice little Rebels cameo that we got. And Zeb, I still can't believe we saw Zeb and I think that's so awesome. But that's going to be it for me for this week. Again, if you haven't done so yet, don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Of course, if you're looking for audio versions of what we do here on the channel, type in Loki Geek on your podcast platform of choice where you could find the recap portion of this episode and everything else that we do up on there for your downloading and listening pleasure. And one last reminder, if you're in a position to further help the channel and help the channel grow, don't forget, check out the affiliates that we have in the description of this video. We've got some great discounts and deals for you to check out and maybe some things that you've never heard of before. So you could be finding something very cool for yourself or for a loved one. And by participating and by purchasing stuff for yourself, you will also be helping support the channel at no additional cost to all of you. So once again, thank you so much for your support. But like I said, that's it for me. I'm going to head on out of here. So once again, I will see all of y'all next week. Stay cool, stay classy, stay safe. See you in the next one. All right. Peace out, y'all.